My name is Sui, Major of His Imperial Majesty's Army. You're welcome, gentlemen. Please, be seated. Please, be seated. I'll stand. So that we may inform your government, and of course the Red Cross, you will supply me with certain information. You, the position of your regiment. We're only required to give you our name, rank, and serial number. Adams, Corporal, 44312. Sir. I see you do not intend to cooperate. This is most unfortunate. Your name? Bernard Shaw. Rank? General. Serial number? Whitehall, 1212. It's no good, Mike. Give him your name, rank, and number. He can't ask for anything else. Brody, Private 73241. Sir, I am pleased to see you not entirely stupid. Now, your regiment. You appear to be more sensible. Your regiment. Maybe your officer will cooperate more. Your regiment and its strength. Your regiment and its strength. Under military law, as prisoners of war, our name, rank and number are all we are required to give. So, we shall see. I have treated you with the utmost patience. Please. Chief! Picnic this. You'll only make it worse, Mike, carrying on the way you did just now. Well, what do you want me to do? Cuddle him? Shut up, Brody. You've got to decide what to tell them. They're bound to know that we couldn't have got far in this blasted jungle. They must know that the rest of the unit is somewhere nearby. It's lucky we don't know their exact position, sir. What do you mean? Of course we know. We've got to decide what to tell them. Look, sir, I don't know nothing about this war. I don't even know what we're doing in this ruddy jungle. But I do know there are 50 men out there with nothing but rifles and grenades waiting for the relief that won't be there for three days. Looks like the naffy break already. You pang? I wonder what they'll do to him. We should have decided what we were going to say. They won't get much out of Mike. Your regiment. IRA. Position of your battalion headquarters. Breaking up, moving out when I left. But they did say where they were going. Where? Tokyo. You will only make matters less pleasant for yourself and your comrades. Now, why don't you wrap up? I have taken enough of your insolence, English pig. Japanese pig. Think! The position of your unit. Squint-eyed knit. It's strength. Go get yourself knotted. How many men? How many guns? Tell me! Tell me! Yellow rat! Dirty bastards! I knew he'd push them too far. Wonder which of us they'll take next. Go! 
Your position, your strength, what guns! Are you drunk again, Charlie? I don't know where you find the money. Come on up, Sir Daisy. That's your old pal, Sergeant Foster. Come on, on your feet, Charlie. You just caught me. This is supposed to be my early night. Early night? Not a training school now, you know. No, you should get a few evenings off then. Who is the old boy? Charlie Tuffler. Quite a character around here. Known? Just a harmless old drunk. So I can't imagine where he got this lot from. What lot? Well, when I picked him up, his pockets were stuffed with pound notes. Nearly 500 of them. The strangest thing is the old boy's hand. His hand? What about it? It's been amputated. Quite recently, too. Called to the doctor here. Probably in an accident. Plenty of old drunks get run over. Yeah, maybe. What about the money? Insurance from the accident. Paid out pretty quick, didn't they? All right, he won it on the pools. Well, according to Charlie, he didn't. How does he account for it? He says he sold his hand for 500 pounds. How long have you been here, Miss? Oh, I couldn't off do with a drink. You lie still a moment, I'll pour you out some water. Water? Yes, sugar, oh, water, knock it down. The girlfriend will shoot me. She'll wait, won't she? She'll have to. Oh, here's the doctor. Oh, excuse me, doctor. Do you see Mr. Tapler now? Yes, I suppose so. He's running a high fever. He should have stayed in hospital at least another ten days after that hand amputation. And how long since the operation was performed, can you tell? Oh, two days at the most. Gross incompetence on someone's part, if you ask me. Treat him gently, won't you? Mr. Tapler? Mr. Tapler. Charlie. Charlie. Are you a copper? That's right, Hackney Police. This is the sergeant who brought you here. I tried to tell him about it just now, but they, they wouldn't let me talk. Well, I expect they wanted you to have a rest first. Mm. Like to tell us what happened from the beginning? Mm. Beginning? Mm. How it all started. The money and everything. Oh, yeah, yes, I, I met this bloke in a... He bought me a few drinks and he asked me if I could do it with 500 quid. Who was this, Charlie? Well, I, I thought he was kidding at first, but he wasn't. What was his name? Eh? Oh, uh, Roberts. Mr. Mr. Roberts. Said he'd give me 500 quid to have me hand off. What happened then? I, and they took me to a hospital in the country. What hospital? I don't know. They kept me a proper in the dark. 
What you don't know, you can't tell after them. After they'd done it, they wanted to keep me there, but I wouldn't have that. So I scooped. Tried to get a lift on the main road at first, but I, I couldn't. And I saw this small station. From which station in London did you arrive at? I didn't. I come to reckon that they'd pick me up if I got there. So, when the train stopped outside London, I opened the carriage door and I nips out. Now, Charlie, this man who first approached you, did you see him again at the hospital? Man? Roberts. Oh, uh, no, I... No, I can't quite remember. <coughs> I'm afraid you'll have to leave now. If his condition improves by the morning, we can see him again. Right, thanks. Well, I'd like to know how he really got that money. Yeah, pretty fantastic, isn't it? Not very convincing. Inspector Money, I'll accuse me of drinking when I report this lot. You better hang on here in case Taplow dreams up anything else. But I'm off duty at ten. Off duty? Not a training school now, you know. That's right. What for? Well, I've got to keep an eye on things. Are you from Scotland Yard? Of course. everybody and everything. Morning, sir. Sir, Foster, get back to Hackney and let me know the minute anything comes in on Taplow. Right, sir. The trouble with policemen, Dave, is they think they know the lot. I know I shouldn't have dismissed it so lightly, sir. Well, you'll learn in time. I've known Taplow since I was on the beat. I've heard him concoct 50 different stories for drunk charges. Why the hell didn't I realize this was different? It just didn't ring true, sir. Well, that's why I should have listened. How did that harmless old boy get mixed up in all this? Yes? Hackney for you, sir. Right. Bunyard. Are you sure? When? Yes. Yes. Right. As soon as Foster gets back, send him down there. They've just pulled Taplow out of the river. He's been murdered. Come on. Thinking of the kind of man who can get anything for money. 
You mean Mr. Roberts? Yeah. Keep asking myself, why? Well, it would seem for some incomprehensible reason a hand was needed. And quickly. It was all arranged and over in two days. And needed so urgently, it was worth 500 pounds. And worth murdering for. Yes. But these are Taplow's personal belongings, sir. Oh, right. Uh, Foster, get us some tea, will you, please? And Foster, have you seen my sandwiches? Thanks. <sighs> Why do they have to kill him? Someone must have been pretty desperate, sir. That someone's been damn clever, too. He's left no ends, no leads, nothing. We don't know where the amputation took place, who performed it, or even why. And there's no apparent motive, David. Sergeant, check up on all hospitals and clinics within a 30-mile radius of London, and let me know if they've got anything on Taplow, will you? Right, thanks. Wait a minute, sir. Taplow said he bought a ticket to London, but dropped off onto the line before he got there. Hmm. Well, in that case, if he didn't get right to the terminus, he didn't hand in his ticket, right? Cigarette. Wallet. Pawn ticket. Pension book. once this morning. We've had no Mr. Taplow here. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Something wrong, Inspector? I see you had a patient here named Roberts. Oh, yes, Mr. Roberts. Could you tell me why he was here? Yes. He had septicemia of the right hand and wrist. We had to amputate him. Could you describe this, Mr. Roberts? Oh, late 50s. Possibly a minor alcoholic. <laughs> Foolish old man. He discharged himself only two days after the operation. Tapler. Yes. You quite sure that Roberts was his correct name? That was the name registered when Dr. Crawshaw brought him in. Dr. Crawshaw? Our supervisor and head surgeon. He performed the operation. I see. Well, if he's not too busy, I'd like to have a word with him. He's not here today. Oh. When are you expecting him? As a matter of fact, he hasn't reported at the clinic for the last two days. Is that unusual? Well, uh, yes, it is. I've tried to contact him at his flat, but there's no reply. May I see the medical file on Mr. Roberts? I'm afraid there isn't one, Inspector. Well, surely the recording of all medical treatments is required by law. The night the operation was performed on uh, Mr. Roberts, I wasn't on duty. The first I knew about it was the next morning. It was an emergency. Dr. Crawshaw was a busy man. It must have slipped his mind. How very careless of him. But the rest of the staff must have known about this. As I said, it was an emergency. Dr. Crawshaw performed the operation, and the theater nurse was Nurse Guyber. None of the other resident staff were called in. Is that usual? Well, uh, no, sir. The nurse who assisted... Uh... Nurse Guyber. Yes. May we see her? Uh, she should be on duty in one of the wards. Shall I get her? If you wouldn't mind. There won't be a moment. Not much doubt about Taplow's story now, sir. No, well, we'd better put out an emergency call for that Dr. Crawshaw. There'll be no need. I'm Simon Crawshaw. Oh. They've been worried about you. Have they? I just took a couple of days off. And might I inquire what you're doing here? Well, we're police officers. We think you may be able to assist us in some inquiries we're making regarding a Mr. Roberts. Roberts? Oh, yes, hand amputation. Rather fortunate for him, I was driving back from London and found him by the roadside. His right hand was very badly injured. I assumed he'd been in an accident. I operated to save the man's life. I see. He disappeared from here late one night. I wanted to keep him in for a period of convalescence. That's a pity you didn't. He was murdered earlier today. Murdered? Yes. 
Mr. Roberts was a nice little boy. I'm sorry. As a matter of fact, his name was Taplow, Charles Taplow. Taplow? Yes, can you explain why he was registered here as Roberts? Please, I'm all right. Have the police questioned you yet? No. Nurse Guyber? Yes. Don't worry. You've done nothing. Well, Inspector, I, I expect the first thing you want to see is the file and x-rays of Roberts. Uh, Tapler. Oh, you have them here? They're in my office. I'll go and get them. Thanks very much. Sergeant Potter will go along with you. You don't mind. Obviously, I have no choice. Don't worry. I want you to sit down, miss. Simon has done nothing. Now, you want to help the doctor, don't you? I will do anything. Good. Now, I want you to tell me all you know about Mr. Roberts' operation. Why, nothing. It was an emergency amputation. I assisted Dr. Croshaw. Yes, Dr. Croshaw told you nothing of the injury. He said something about a road accident, that is all. I see. Now, while Miss Roberts was here, did he have any visitors at all? Ah, uh, no. Well, not at all. No one came to see him? No. Ah, uh, well, there was one on the night of the operation. Oh? Uh, who was he? I, I do not know. Dr. Croshaw would not give him permission to see the patient. The man got very angry. There was a terrible argument. Finally, Dr. Croshaw made him go. I see. The matter isn't as serious as your inspector imagines, you know. If you'd just get that file, sir. A cigarette? No, thank you. Who did this visitor ask to see? I told you. Mr. Roberts. He asked to see Mr. Roberts. Not Mr. Taplow. Taplow? No, why should he? I think he was... Yeah. One more thing. This visitor. What did he look like? I would know him again anywhere. Oh, you would? Yes. You see, he only had one hand. Stay there, Nurse Guyver. I tried to stop him. He shot himself. Simon! Well, I've been through the files, sir. There's no medical report on either Roberts or Taplow. Right. Then we've got our evidence that the operation was unnecessary. And that story about finding Taplow by the roadside was a complete fake. And why was the operation performed in the first place? Yeah. And why did that young doctor have to do it? Money? Oh, it seems unlikely. He was successful in a good position. Blackmail? Yes. Well, we'll check it. If there's something in his past, it might give us a lead. What about this one-handed visitor who called to see Taplow? Yes. Only he was expecting to see Roberts. Reception? Inspector Munyard here. Look, if there are any calls for Dr. Crawshaw, have them put through to me, will you? All right, thank you. Inspector, Mr. Roger Crawshaw is here. Roger Crawshaw? Dr. Crawshaw's cousin. He'd like to see you. Oh, yes, of course. Ask him to come in, will you? Good Lord, Roger Crawshaw. Does the name ring a bell? You know, sir, the Crawshaw Children's Hospital. Oh, I see. So that's who he is. Bags of money, big business. The poor man's Lord Nuffield. Inspector Munyard. Yeah. I'm Roger Crawshaw. How do you do, sir? You must forgive me. I just can't believe it. I went to sit down, sir. Yeah, thank you. Dr. Crawshaw was your cousin, I believe. We're more like brothers. Can't be true. <laughs> Suicide. He had no cause. Well, we believe he shot himself trying to avoid arrest. Arrest? On what charge? Uh, your cousin performed an operation which, to say the least, was irregular, possibly illegal. Inspector, my cousin was a doctor of the highest integrity. 
He would do nothing to bring himself or his hospital into disrepute. Mr. Crawshaw, I take it that you would want to help clear your cousin's name in any way you can. That is not necessary. Now, look. Someone paid your cousin's patient to have this operation. And we believe it's possible this same man blackmailed him into performing it. First you accuse him of performing an illegal operation, and then you suggest blackmail. Possibly. Then obviously you haven't the faintest conception of the sort of man he was. I can understand you wanting to defend him, but there's no doubt that he performed this operation on a man who has since been murdered. Murdered? Yes. I hope Dr. Crawshaw was involved only in the operation. But we can only establish that by getting at the truth. Yes. Yes, you're right. I can't deny that I've noticed a change in Simon recently. In what way? He seemed on edge, worried about something. Money? He wasn't a wealthy man. We both have sunk a lot into this establishment. Although he asked me for a loan. A loan? Yes, I wish I'd given it to him now. He wanted 500 pounds in cash. Did he say why he wanted it? No, that's why I didn't let him have it. It's rather difficult. You see, he got himself involved with one of the nurses on the staff. I thought he wanted it for her. Nurse Guyber? Yes, that's right. I see. Uh, Dr. Crawshaw never mentioned this operation to you at all? Never. I still don't believe it. Yes, well, that'll be all for the moment. We'll contact you later if there's anything else. Inspector, I'm a wealthy man with a great deal of influence. And I'll spare neither to prove Simon's innocence. And I shall look for the truth, Mr. Crawshaw. Good day, Inspector. Yes, sir. Get on to Nurse Skyber and find out about that 500 pounds. Right. Hello? There's a call for Dr. Crawshaw. Put it through. Dr. Crawshaw? Speaking. Is Robert still there? Who's that speaking? Never mind, is Robert there? Who's that calling? Never mind, is Robert there? Yes, who is that? Hello? Hello? Damn. Switchboard. Look, give me the telephone exchange. One moment, sir. Hurry, girl, hurry. Number, please. Operator, this is the police. I want an A74. Yes, a call was put through here just a moment ago. It's Brockledon 312. Uh, I want you to trace it. One moment, sir. All right, thank you. No, 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 I told you a thousand times no, Sam. He did not pay me any money if I shoot me. That's what we'd like to know. Mr. Crawshaw suggested there was a relationship between you and the doctor. Yes, there was. Simon was my husband. You've got it, good. Yes, hold on. Right, go ahead. Leighton Stone, 2471, J. Marshall, 32, Bidnell Street, Leighton Stone. Right, thank you. We're barking up the wrong tree with Nurse Guyber, sir. Yes. She was the doctor's wife. Oh, come on. You know, one thing's certain, Dave. Taplow wasn't admitted to that nursing home in the name of Roberts just to confuse matters. Somewhere a man called Roberts exists. Police officers. May we come in? 
I run a respectable house here. Uh, yes, I'm sure you do. All right. Come in. I can't do anything this way. Cup of tea? No, thanks. There's one on the boil. How about you, sir? Yes, please. No, thanks. Please yourself? Well, what can I do for you? We're inquiring about a telephone call that was made from your number today to Brockleton 312. Know anything about it? Can't say I do. It's your phone, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's my phone. But any one of the tenants could have used it. It's a coin box in the passage. I haven't used it. Who occupies the rest of the house? Well, there's Miss Clark. She's out of business all day. Nice girl. No nonsense. Who else? Mr. and Mrs. Brody. Are they at home? Can't say about Mrs. B. Mr. Brody's in all right. He's been out of work the last couple of weeks. Nobody else in the house today. Has he used the phone this morning? No. How should I know? Oh, well, we'd better go and have a word with him. The room's just across the passage. Thanks. Oh, no trouble. Always willing to have the police. Over there, sir. What you want? Mr. Brody, we have police officers. Well, go away. You're disturbing the peace. We want to have a word with you, Mr. Brody. Yep. May we come in? Brought a bottle? Afraid not. Never mind. Come in. Having a party? Celebrating. Very nice, too. We're inquiring into a telephone call that was made from here today. Somebody been swearing at the operator? The Allen House nursing home. Do you know anything about it? No. You haven't used the phone this morning? Don't think so. The phone's just outside your room. That's right. Anybody else used it today? Can't remember. Well, somebody did, Mr. Brody. Mr. Marshall says he wasn't him. There's nobody else in the house. So that leaves you. Yeah. Do you know anything about the Allen House nursing home? Never heard of it. How about Dr. Simon Crawshaw? Who's he? Didn't you ask to speak to him on the telephone this morning? You're trying to catch me, aren't you? <laughs> Cigarette? <laughs> Bribing me? <laughs> been in all day. Does it look as though I've been out? Does the name Roberts mean anything to you? Robert? Yes. Whoever telephoned this morning was inquiring after a Mr. Roberts. How about Charlie Taplow? You're talking in riddles, Sonny. Now look, Mr. Brody. A man has been murdered. Another committed suicide. If you know anything about this telephone call, you'd be wise to tell us. Suicide? Yes. Whoever telephoned this morning and asked to speak to Dr. Crawshaw Phoned an hour after Crawshaw had shot himself. You said somebody had been murdered. That's right. An old man by the name of Teplow. He was in the Allen House nursing home under the name of Roberts. Now, come on, what do you know about all this? Not a thing. All right, Mr. Brody. We'll come back when you're sober. Next time, bring a bottle. It's pretty obvious he's lying, sir. I'll lay 50 to 1 he made that phone call. Yes. And I'll bet he's the one-handed visitor on the night of Taplow's operation. Did you notice the way he kept his right hand in his dressing gown pocket the whole time? Mm. Haven't got enough to pull him in, though, sir. I don't know. Look, you'd better stay here and keep an eye on him. I'm going to get Nurse Guy, better see if she can definitely identify him as Taplow's visitor. Right, sir. What'll I do if he makes a move? 
Or you phone the station. Oh, and make a note of anybody who calls here. I'll send Foster down to help you. Oh, um, about my early night, sir, if, if the girlfriend phones. I'll tell her you've got another day. Said you might need some help. I wasn't kidding. Hey, you're all right. Some mind me quick. Right, what's your game with police officers? I'm Brody's brother. I think something's happened to him. about. I'll ring the station. Look upstairs. Doctor around and get Inspector Munyard over to Brody's place right away. Well, what's the matter? What's happened? I'm afraid you can't go in, ma'am. Oh, but I'm Mrs. Brody. No, I... there's, there's been an accident. Oh. We'd we better go in there. Nothing and saw nobody. No. This won't be good for my house, you know. Well, perhaps you wouldn't mind waiting outside. For a moment. Call me if you want anything. 
Thanks. Will you try to help us if you can? Do you know of anyone who'd want to take your husband's life? The only Roberts. Roberts? What do you know about him? Nothing. Nothing at all. Only that my husband spent all our married life looking for him. There was only one way it could end. Do you know why he wanted to find Roberts? No, he would never talk to me. He just brood about it. I'm, I know this must be painful for you, but would you tell me how your husband came to lose his hand? Well, that's something else he'd never talk about. I suppose that's why I've always felt it was tied up with this other business. Roberts. We'll get him, Mrs. Brody. That is the man, Inspector. Are you sure? Yes. Right. Thank you, Nurse Skyber. My driver will take you back to the hospital. You've been very helpful. We shan't be troubling you anymore. Foster, take Nurse Skyber out of the car, will you? Sir. Do you want me any more, Inspector? No, I don't think so. Sergeant's got your address. Thank you. Oh, by the way, Mr. Brady, there is one other thing. Apparently, your brother never told his wife how he came to lose his hand. Perhaps you can tell me. His hand? It had always been that way. Always. Since he was born. Oh, one more thing. Your brother had been looking for a man called Roberts. Do you know why? No. I knew Mike had been after him for years, but I didn't know what was behind it. Well, that'll be all for now. Thank you. Right. You better keep an eye on him, sir. He's likely to take the law into his own hands if he gets hold of Roberts. Might save us the trouble. I wonder why he lied about that hand. Do you think he was lying? Pretty sure. Still, it won't be difficult to check. Have you searched the room? Not thoroughly. You know, Dave, this is beginning to form a pattern. Anybody having information about Roberts is neatly put out of the way. First Tatler, now Brody. Dr. Crawshaw's suicide must have saved another killing. But where does Brody fit in? He's tied up with Roberts somehow. He was led to believe it was Roberts who had the amputation. Sir, what is it? Checked on my inquiry about Brody, Michael John Brody. Yeah. He was born with no deformities. Yes, that's what I expected. Thanks. Dr. Crawshaw's personal papers. Oh, they might tell us something. They'll keep you occupied. You having a free morning, sir? You watch it, or you'll never get that evening off. The girlfriend's complaining. She's forgotten what I look like. She's complaining. Yes, sir. She... Anything else cropped up? No, Brody's version of his brother's missing hand was a lot of nonsense. Did you call on him? Oh, yes, there's something fishy there, sir. His landlady said he packed a bag and left early this morning. Ah, now, what's he up to? Bunyard. Speaking. Mrs. Brody. Yes, Mrs. Brody. Someone's been following me all the afternoon, Inspector. I don't know. I first noticed him when I was shopping. This is Brody. What do you want? I want to talk to you. Who are you? Mrs. Brody. Mrs. Brody! Damn! Dave, grab the car and get over to Mrs. Brody at the double. Right. Who are you? Why have you been following me? I'm not going to hurt you. I want to speak to you. I've come up specially from Norwich. I was a friend of your husband's. 
you knew Mike? Yes. Can we uh, talk somewhere? You can leave the door open if you like. Well, what do you want? You, you, you said you were a friend of Mike's. Yes, a very old friend. My name's Adams, George Adams. Did Mike never mention me? No, I don't think so. I knew him in the old days. I read that he'd been... He was dead and I wanted to see you. Why? I think I know who killed him. You... Why haven't you been to the police? Kill me too. Roberts? You know about him. Only the little Mike told me. What was that? Oh, it seems Mike had some grudge against him and, and wanted revenge of some kind. He had good reason, believe me. We both did. Mrs. Brody, I said just now that I couldn't go to the police about Roberts, but you could if I told you what I know. Police, did you? Well, I was on the phone to them when you came. Oh, what shall I do? I, I can't tell them. I can't. Roberts would find out. How can I get out? Help me. All right, come this way quickly. Through there, the door leads to an alley. Hurry. You all right, Mrs. Brody? Yes. What happened? The man who'd been following me, he came here. What did he want? He said he was a friend of Mike's. Well, why didn't you keep him here? Poor man was as frightened as me. Look, Mrs. Brody, you'd better help if you wanted to find your husband's killer. But that wasn't him. How do you know? He was like Mike. He, he only had one hand. Did he tell you anything about himself? Yes. He said his name was Adams. Adams? George Adams. He came up from the country. You seem to have had a nice, cozy little chat. Did he say how he came to know your husband? No. Only that they'd known each other in the old days. Was your husband in the forces, Mrs. Brody? Yes, he was. The army. Why? Just an idea. Yes. Demobbed, 1946. Right, thank you. That was a good hunch, Dave. Adams and Brody were in the army together. Adams now lives at Great Wakering. That's a small village about four and a half miles outside Norwich. That ties up, sir. This could be the break. Yes, it could be. At least Adams is a link between Brody and Roberts. Unless Adams is Roberts. Mm. But, you know, we seem to be going around in circles. If only we could sort these pieces out. Now, look, let's see what we've got amongst this lot. Oh, no. I'll never keep a girlfriend at this rate. Perhaps you'll give me an evening off for the honeymoon, sir. Young officers shouldn't get hitched. You did. Oh, that was different. I married the super's daughter. Is that how you became an inspector? Yeah. Money on. Mrs. Brody. Yes, speaking. No, just rang me, inspector. A man's got in touch with him who knows Roberts. Yes. He's meeting him at Liverpool Street Station, and he's taking him to Norwich to see Roberts. Did Noel Brody tell you the name of the man who contacted him? Yes, he, he did. Who? Are you sure? Right, thanks, Mrs. Brody. I think we know who Roberts is. We're off again, sir. Yes, to see Adams. Ah, uh ah, -uh, that address. for some time that Adams and Roberts were the same. You couldn't be mistaken. Of course not. I found positive proof among my cousin's papers. Roberts changed his name to Adams soon after the war. Well, what do you plan to do, Mr. Croshaw? That's up to you, my friend. He'll recognize me, so you'll have to go up to the house alone. Don't worry. I'll arrange to have you sent safely out of the country after you've dealt with him. My doll is called Belinda. Oh, now, darling, don't worry the gentleman. 
Have you got a dolly? No. Belinda has an accident. Has she? Look, she's lost her hand. Now, that's enough, darling. Mummy, I'm talking. We're going to see my auntie. Really? You've lost a bit of your button. Shall I ask Belinda to sew on a new one for you? Uh, come on, darling. We're getting out at the next stop. Goodbye. Broken a button, Mr. Crosshaw. So it would seem. Do you know where the other half is? No, why? Is this it? It looks as though it might be. It matches. <laughs> it would seem to be mine. Why all the fuss? Why are you so interested? I'm only interested in finding a man named Roberts. This button. Wouldn't you like to know where I found it? Found it? Yes. It was near Mike's body. You were in the room just a few minutes before I got there. You killed him. That's fantastic. You're Roberts. George. I want to talk to your husband. You promised you'd never come here again. Where can we talk? Please go away. You'll frighten my son. Look, Roberts, I've never done you any harm. I, I've always kept out of this business between you and Brody. I want to talk to you, Adams. I suggest you invite me in. Can't we forget the past, Roberts? Brody won't let me. So I have to see it through. My little boy's in there. Let my wife put him to bed and then I'll talk to you. The police. What are they doing here? I don't know. You're a liar. You told them. Mummy, the telly's gone wrong again. Keep back. Mummy. I mean it, Adams. Open that door. If you want to see your son again alive, don't tell the police. Please, Roberts, don't do this to us. Remember what I said? George, let them go. George Adams? Yes. We are police officers. May we come in? Yes. Wait there a moment. I'll come straight to the point, Mr. Adams. Do you know a man called Roger Crawshaw? Crawshaw. Perhaps you know him better as Roberts. Has he been here tonight? Has Noel Brody been here tonight? Noel Brody. Why did you call on Mrs. Brody earlier today? I... Only because I'd read of her husband's death. Why did you tell her that you know who Roberts is? I didn't. She must have been mistaken. You know Roberts? No. Where is Roberts now? Now look, I'm losing patience with you, Mr. Adams. I have no alternative but to take you in for questioning. 
accept. He's done nothing. I'm sorry, Mrs. Adams. <laughs> Mummy, I got away. Peter. Thank God. Uh, are you all right, son? Yes. You're not hurt or anything? No. Better put him to bed, Ruth. I'll be up to see you in a minute, Peter. You know, Mummy, that man frightened me. Oh. Which man, Sonny? It was Roberts. Do you know which way he went? Yes, uh, over the old bridge. Right, thank you, Sonny. Now, you see, Inspector, why I couldn't tell you. But you realize you'll never be safe until we find him. The old bridge. Inspector, I think I know where he'll go. It's the only place around here he knows. It's not far, but it's difficult to get to. I'll show you. Good. Come on, I've got a car outside. <laughs> Where exactly is it? It's an old mill out on the marshes. They're right here. Up there somewhere, sir. Crawshaw! Crawshaw! You'd better give yourself up. We've got the mill surrounded. Crawshaw! We know that you're Roberts. Do you hear me? It's no use. It's all over for you. Adams, keep away from that door. He can see you. You all right, Adams? Yes, I'm all right. Keep him occupied, sir. Roberts, drop your gun and stand up where we can see you. I knew you'd spit on me, Adams. You're all alike, you little men. Bodie was the same, no guts. Simon was the only one worth anything. Yes, he had guts enough to risk everything for you. And why shouldn't he? I made Simon what he was. Yes, and you drove him to suicide, didn't you? No. No, it was Brody. Brody. He'd never leave me in peace. Never. That's why you killed him? I had to! I had to! It was his life or mine! Phone a doctor, Brody. Well, Roberts won't get far now. Not with that bullet in him. No, I suppose not. Cigarette? No, thanks. I only use these. You know, in a way, I'm sorry for him. 
all started a long time ago, during the war in Burma. Your position! Your strength! What guns! Mr. Roberts. Thank you. You have been most cooperative. It is of the utmost misfortune that your two comrades were not as sensible as the officer. You may go. Thank you, soldier. <laughs> Some men are born strong. Others weak. So who can judge Roberts? So you and Brody made the sacrifice for nothing. I suppose so. But who can blame a man for being what he is? <laughs> 